Manifestation Day of Sri Swami Samarth. The day Sri Swami Samarth manifested is taken as Kshetra Suddhadvatiya, year 1072 as per Hindu calendar and the month March or April of year 1150 as per English calendar. Haribau alias Swami Sith the beloved disciple of Sri Swami Samarth had perceived by his divine sight that Sri Swami Samarth had manifested in the form of a Balayogi from a pillar on this day of Kshetra Shuddhadvatiya, in a village Chetaketa near Hastinapur. On this day of Kshetra Suddhadvatiya Haribau would come from Mumbai to Akalkot and celebrate the anniversary festival of the birthday of Sri Swami Samarth in the presence of Sri Samarth. Based on this lunar day well-known astrologer Nana Reki had prepared the horoscope of Sri Swami Samarth. Sri Swami Samarth had approved this and then blessed Nana Reki with initiation. When Sri Reki went to Akalkot for the first time along with his wife to take Sri Swami Samarth's Darshan, his wife Sakubai's past life got awakened and she was blessed by the Darshan of Sri Swami Samarth in the form of Balayogi child ascetic. That is why the anniversary festival of the birthday of Sri Swami Samarth is being celebrated on Kshetra Suddhadvatiya Day. Similarly, Sri Narsina Saraswati had taken birth at Karanja Nagar near Akola, Washim District, Maharashtra State, on Posh Shukladvatiya Day. It becomes clear that Sri Swami Samarth himself is personally Sri Narsina Saraswati himself. Hence there is a tradition of celebrating the manifestation day of Sri Swami Samarth on Posh. Shuddha Dwitiya, month of January as per English calendar. Kardali Vana, forest, to a Kalkat Sri Narsina Saraswati. The incarnation of Lord Datatri, disappeared in Pataliganga, during the year 1459 and then went to, Kadali Van, at the foot of Srishale Mountain. Sri Swami Samarth, during the year 1838, appeared at Mangalaveda. During these 400 years period, Sri Narsina Saraswati performed numerous known and unknown miracles. After coming out from Kardali Vana he went to a desolate forest on the northern side of Bhagirathi river and sat there completely absorbed in devout meditation. Nobody knew as to how much time passed like this. His body was fully covered by a growing anthill. One day a woodcutter came there. He used his axe to cut the tree but that axe hit the anthill fell on Sriguru's thigh. Blood started oozing. This disturbed the meditative trance of Sriguru and he stood up. The woodcutter became very nervous but Sriguru manifested in the form Sri Swami Samarth. The mark of the axe wound did remain on the thigh of Sri Swami Samarth. From the forest on the northern side of Bhagirathi river Sri Swami Samarth went to Gangotri a holy place in Uttar Pradesh. Then he came to Devalgram. There he installed his, Padukas, and left the place. From there, he came to Rajar in Marathavada, Maharashtra. At Rajar Sri Swami Samarth installed a Muth. The then Muslim king, had given an estate as a gift to the Muth. Later, Sri Swami Samarth left Rajar, leaving behind everything there and went to the holy places Udupi in Karnataka and Pandarapura in Maharashtra. From there he came to Mangalaveda again in Maharashtra and appeared in the public during the year 1838. During this period he became popularly known as Kankala Bharati. In Mangal the people called him, Dagambar Swami. Sri Swami Samarth thus spent some time at Mangalaveda, Mohola, 
Solapura, Ganagapura all in Maharashtra and then during the year 1855 came to Akalakota. <laughs>